This is Pony Prepper Bill. Today is Friday, June 22nd or 23rd, I think. Uh, I just wanted to post a video that we did survive uh, the forest fire. Uh, it was in Wharton State Forest. It didn't make it here. Uh, it was got contained, uh, but I did just in case because when I was out filming, there was ash falling. I saw some embers hit my truck. And the wind was shifting from what I heard. So I figured I had my trailer full of topsoil or potting soil or whatever for the garden. So I figured just in case, I shoveled all that off, got the trailer ready in case we had to evacuate, which we didn't. But you never know. If you need a trailer and you got got shit on it, it's going to take you an hour to unload it. It doesn't hurt to have an empty trailer. Because we got all the animals, the pigs, you got to put in cages and crates and get them on a trailer. And now we got chickens. But, you know, I've been working on the coop a little bit. The chicks are getting bigger. I don't know if you can see them. But they're getting bigger. I went to Tractor Supply and bought this solar light. Works pretty good. It lights up out here. And I got screen inside and it lights up a little bit. The chickens aren't going to bed at night. I got to come out here at night and scoop them up, put them in a box and put them back in the coop. Uh, some people say they go in on their own. Some people say it's they're too young. But we had them in here for two weeks before we let them out. So I, I don't know. Maybe some people said it's like 9 o'clock at night before theirs go in. I don't know. But I had the heat lamp on there because it's been getting pretty chilly at night. The daytime's been like 95, 97. Then you get like a day that's like 72 or something. That was pretty nice. But I got a little table and chairs. I sit out here and I work around the chickens. They get used to me. And of course, the freaking pig comes out. And he was out here digging frickin' holes everywhere. Right where I'm at, you know, so you trip and fall. But we ended up getting a dog temporarily or full-time, I'm not sure. I'll put a little video in here. The neighbor got a dog like two months ago. The dog is supposedly eight years old. Lived outside. The guy lived around a corner. He moved and he bragged about how much he got for his house. He brags about his Cadillacs and his cars, his car collection, from what I heard. But he's got a dog. He moved and didn't want the dog anymore. So he gave the neighbor the dog. How you can have an animal and just say, you know, especially when you got money. If you know, you're know you having hard times and you can't afford the dog, I, I understand that. I had problems when I was moving and stuff, and I was trying to find somebody to take care of my dog temporarily. But he was moving, got money, sold his house. I don't want the dog anymore. So the neighbor gets the dog. He was lit, supposedly lived outside. Little little dog, his name's Kodiak. We, uh, I call him Cody. A uh, little white dog, puffy white dog. She took him, had him groomed, had him trimmed, full of ticks. Took him to the vet, <clears throat> evidently. He's got cancer, it's not gonna live long. But she's had him like two months, maybe a little bit more. But he's been getting loose and, you know, just coming right through the woods right here and hanging out with me. When I'm outside, he comes running over while I'm building the coop and stuff. And Well, then he comes to the door, you know, goes to the front door, we let him in and he eats and then he wouldn't go out. So, she comes over, gets the dog, takes him back, and an hour later, he's back on our porch. Um, <clears throat> he's been living here for the last week. She came over, took the dog, put him inside. Now, he's never barked. I never heard him bark. But he scratches the door like he's got to go out. She lets him out, and he comes right over here. So, he's been here for the last week. Um, I don't know how long he's going to live, but he's, he's a nice dog. But he's hard of hearing. I mean, you holler, you call him, he, he don't listen. Uh, I mean, I tried getting him upstairs to our room, but he 
he came up twice, went up the steps twice on his own, but he, he shakes like he's scared to be upstairs. So he stays downstairs. Uh, he's been laying on the pig's bed sometimes because the pig's in the other room. But he'll sleep on the floor, and I'll come down. I'm like, Cody, you got to go out. You got to go out. Nothing. And when he sees my shadow, he, he jumps. And he'll walk, walk around here. I'll call him and call him and holler. Nothing. If you whistle or you clap, he'll turn around and look. But he can lay right in front of you, and you could say anything, holler. You know, it's a shame. But he's, he's a nice dog. So, for now, we have a dog. Um, I was working earlier, and I couldn't find him. He, he doesn't want to stay in the house unless you're in there, which is weird, but he's in there now. He wanted to go in. Couldn't find him anywhere. He, here, he was in the garage laying under my ambulance. I, I got him out because I wanted to close the garage, and then he went right back in and laid by the back tire. And it's hot as hell in the garage. I mean, the floor, concrete floor, I guess that's nice and cool. Uh, so I just wanted to post this, uh, an update saying uh, I, I'm alive. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on, boy, I tell you. People falling for everything. But I've seen so many people out there. Brand new cars, brand new boats, brand new campers, brand new pickup trucks. Shit. I barely go out. We're trying to figure out, you know, what we need at the store, when we're going to go. Do we have to go that way for anything else? You know, like I needed chicken feed. I wanted to get another water. She wanted something from BJ's or ShopRite. It's like, you know what? We got to run down that way to go to the bank on Thursday. Well, we'll wait. We'll wait. We're not driving 30 miles, coming back, 30 miles, coming back. No. We'll wait four or five days before we go anywhere. Got to save money. I don't know how these people do it. Uh, it's been a bad year as far as I'm concerned. I think it's going to be worse next year. And other people are like, oh, four or five months, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be back the way it was. Uh, I don't think so. Uh cut the grass today try and keep down the bugs been sitting out here the freaking ticks I bought some permethrin made two mixtures I put them in a spray thing and I sprayed the whole front front yard sprayed all around the back of the coop and then then I made a, a lower uh, dose in a different bottle so you can we sprayed the pigs I sprayed the inside of the coop a little bit. And sitting out here, oh my God, I got so many freaking ticks on me. Had a big welt on my side. I had to go get that looked at. And I had to take uh, antibiotics, blood work. I already got Lyme disease, so can you get it again? I don't know. Does it make it worse? Maybe it'll go away. Maybe I'm immune now. And freaking pig. Frickin' pig digs these frickin' holes all around where I'm sitting. Knock the chair over. Look at all these frickin' holes. So, that's what I got for now. Nothing important. Just the chickens getting bigger. Hopefully they start to learn to go in there. Uh, had the heat lamp on at night. And then when it wasn't that hot or wasn't that cold, I had a regular light bulb, but I think it's too, too bright. And they're in there all night, back and forth, back and forth. They sleep for an hour, they're up running around for an hour and eat. And they sleep for an hour, back and forth, back and forth. So I bought the little night lights, you know, like your regular plug in the wall. And I plugged them in there, right over the food and water in the, in the coop. So at night, there's just a little bit of light so they can see. But I say when they get older, they don't need light. But when they're young, they'll jump off the roost or they'll fall. They run into each other. And it's like a sudden blindness or something. And they'll freak out or get hurt. So I got a little light in there. And last night, they slept. When I put them in there, they never ran around. They didn't eat. They slept. So maybe they'll get used to that and go in there. Hopefully they go in there tonight. I don't know how long to wait, though. 
I don't want to wait to midnight and then come out here and try and catch them. Because you can't freaking see. But they are getting big and they're funny. They're funny as hell. I was watching them come out the other day. And... I can see it. They're in the coop. And they're coming down the ramp one at a time. A couple of them will fly down. And then all of a sudden it was like somebody fired a shotgun. This chicken came flying flew out and hit the screen and went down started running around another one comes down walks down the ramp jumps off another one psh, flies out it was hilarious they didn't get hurt but it was funny but they're getting big they're getting big they better better lay some freaking eggs and uh i went into a store the other day and a bunch of women in there, uh, you know, older women, di different age groups. And like, hi, you know, good morning, how can I help you? And I said, good morning, ladies. Whew, that was the wrong thing to say. That used to be the nice, polite thing to say. Good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Don't say that now. Oh, my God. Ladies. I'm a lady today, but I don't know what I'm going to be at noon. Uh, I, I don't know what their pronouns and adverbs and adjectives and whatever the frick it is. So excuse me. I'll never say ladies or gentlemen or anything again. What a freaking world we live in. So this is Pony Prepper Bill, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.